Hello, this is Edward Awad, and welcome to this lesson on transport across biological membranes. One of the main functions of cell membranes is to act as traffic controller of molecules and charged particles in and out of the cell. As we have seen earlier, cell membranes possess selective or differential permeability to molecules and ions. No matter what the permeability is, substances move across a membrane in two ways. The first one through passive processes, meaning that the cell does not require ex energy expenditure in order for substances to move across cell membranes. In passive transport, substances move along their electrochemical gradients, meaning from area of high concentration of the particular substance to an area of low concentration of this substance. And ions are attracted to oppositely charged particles. The second way is through active transport processes, meaning that energy in the form of ATP is needed to move substances across membranes against their electrochemical gradient. Passive transport occurs through the process of diffusion, which is driven by the kinetic energy of molecules and ions. This is best illustrated by this experiment where, we, where a drop of ink is added to water, and with time the ink particles diffuse throughout the volume of water in the beaker. Two types of diffusion are possible across cell membranes, simple and facilitated diffusion. In simple diffusion, substances diffuse unaided directly through the lipid bilayer. Examples of these substances include those that are nonpolar and lipid soluble molecules, as well as suprasmall polar molecules such as water. However, for most biologically important solutes to diffuse, they require membrane proteins to facilitate their diffusion. Facilitated diffusion proteins can be grouped into two large categories, the channel proteins for ions and water, and the carrier or transport proteins for solutes such as glucose and amino acids. Let's look at an example of carrier proteins, that of GLUT1. GLUT1 is an integral membrane protein that allows glucose to diffuse in both directions across a membrane based on its concentration gradient. GLU in GLUT1 refers to glucose and the T to transport. Depending on which side glucose is more concentrated, glucose molecules bind to the protein. This binding causes a change in the protein configuration that would translocate the glucose molecule to the other side of the membrane. A movement similar to a shuttle bus that operates between a hotel and the airport. It is noteworthy to mention that GLUT1 transports only right-handed glucose, which is the form of glucose that is used by cells. Osmosis is a special type of diffusion that refers to the diffusion of water molecules across a selectively permeable membrane. Let's illustrate osmosis by considering two scenarios. In the first scenario, two different solutions are separated by a membrane in a U-shaped tube. The membrane is permeable to both the solvent molecules, meaning water, as well as the solute molecules, or the substance that is dissolved in the solvent. In this case, the solute is glucose. The solution on the left hand side has a lower osmolarity than the one on the right. Osmolarity refers to the total concentration of solute particles in a solution. With time, both solute and solvent molecules diffuse along their concentration gradient, resulting in equilibrium between the two sides of the tube. In the second scenario, we have the same setup except this time the membrane is only permeable to water, but not glucose. With time, water molecules diffuse across the membrane 
toward the solution with a lower water concentration. In other words, water diffuses from the area of low solute concentration to the area of higher solute concentration. A steady state is reached when the osmolarity is the same on both sides of the membrane. Notice here that the volume is not the same on both sides of the tube. Another term used in osmosis is solution tonicity, which refers to how the concentration of a solution affects cell volume and therefore cell shape. Osmosis can shrink or swell a cell depending on the tonicity of the solution in which a cell is bathed. If the solution outside a cell is hypertonic, meaning greater solute concentration and lower water concentration compared to the inside of the cell, water diffused by osmosis out of the cell. Consequently, the cell loses water and shrinks. Conversely, if the solution outside is hypotonic, meaning lower solute concentration and higher water concentration compared to the inside of the cell, water diffuses by osmosis into the cell, resulting in swelling of the cell. In the third example, the inside and the outside of the cell are of equal tonicity or isotonic. In this case, there is no net change in volumes and therefore no change in the cell size and shape. Let's look now at active transport. As I mentioned earlier, active transport involves membrane proteins that use metabolic energy in the form of ATP to move solutes uphill against their concentration gradient. In other words, it involves moving particles from areas of low concentration to areas of high concentration, as seen here. Active transport is directional, involving three types of active transport protein systems. The first one is a uniport system, which involves the movement of one substance in only one direction. The second system is a symporter, which is a protein system that moves two substances in the same direction and at the same time. And the third active transport system is an antiporter, which moves two substances in opposite directions. A common example of uniport protein system is that of proton pumps. These membrane proteins actively transport protons or hydrogen ions out of the cell or membrane bounded organelles. Most types of proton pumps are powered by ATP, whether directly or indirectly. Proton pumps are commonly found in plant cells, bacterial cells, as well as mitochondria and chloroplasts. The sodium potassium pump is a common example of active transport involving an antiport protein system. In this system, the protein pump transports sodium ions and potassium ions against their concentration gradients across a cell membrane. It does so by using energy as ATP and by moving sodium ions out and potassium ions into the cell. For every three sodium ions pumped out, two potassium ions are pumped in. An example of symporter system is that of the membrane protein system that transports glucose against its concentration gradient via a secondary active transport system. In this system, glucose and sodium ions are transported in the same direction. The system indirectly uses ATP by using the sodium ion gradient established by the sodium potassium pump to drive the movement of glucose against its concentration gradient, since the symporter cannot transport sodium ions without transporting glucose at the same time, even if it's against glucose concentration gradient. This type of active transport is known as secondary active transport, while the sodium potassium pump is a type of primary active transport. A third type of active transport is known as bulk transport of substances. It involves exocytosis and endocytosis via vesicles. Transporting substances in bulk using vesicles requires the expenditure of energy as ATP. Most hormones are transported to the plasma membrane by bulk transport 
and secreted by cells into the bloodstream through the process of exocytosis. And finally, here's a summary of membrane transport mechanisms that you may find useful. You can also view a 3D animation to review the concepts of the membrane transport by clicking on the link displayed on the right-hand side of the screen.